Madam Speaker, what do you call a group of unelected, unethical, power-hungry bureaucrats making policy decisions? In many countries, we would call them oligarch and oligarchy. In the United States, though, we call them the Federal Reserve. Which is funny because the Federal Reserve has no reserves and they're absolutely not part of the federal government. What is the Fed? So what is the Fed? What is the Fed? That is the question. But like so many things about Washington, D.C., it depends on who you ask. If you ask the Fed officials themselves, they might show you this chirpy and reassuring video. The Federal Reserve, often referred to as the Fed, is the central bank of the United States. Congress created the Fed in 1913 to help promote a safe and sound monetary and financial system for our nation. According to Edward Griffin, however, who wrote the best-selling book The Creature from Jekyll Island about the shadowy origins of America's central bank, the Fed is essentially a banking cartel, an unholy alliance of power-hungry financiers and corrupt politicians. I had no desire to become a crusader or to be looked at uh, by my neighbors as some kind of a, a tinfoil hat guy. Griffin's book tells the story of how rich titans of industry colluded with powerful lawmakers to control the money supply and all the disastrous consequences that resulted. But when the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, it operated under constraints. It was actually prohibited from buying government debt in the form of U.S. Treasury notes and bonds. Today, the Fed is the largest buyer. In just a few decades, we went from being the world's largest creditor nation with a dollar backed by gold to the world's largest debtor nation with our dollar backed by IOUs. The reason we have inflation is that the money supply is not pegged to something that takes human effort to produce. And it doesn't make any difference whether the industry that produces this debt-based money, whether it's a banking system or a government, the end result is the same. The Federal Reserve has a dual mandate to promote maximum employment and price stability. To help accomplish this, they set the Fed funds rate, or the rate at which banks borrow. This rate has steadily declined over the last 40 years, resulting in cheap capital flowing to large corporations. And that in turn contributed to globalization and asset inflation in stocks and real estate. But too much easy money comes at a great cost, growing wealth concentration and the decimation of the middle class. The very wealthy people have investment plans and they're involved in all kinds of institutional programs where they benefit from inflation. If you're at the beginning of that cycle, you just benefit tremendously. You don't care, it's the suckers at the end of the line are the ones that pay. The Fed's target inflation rate is 2%, but CPI has ballooned since the COVID pandemic stimulus packages to over four times the norm. Can the recent Fed interest rate hikes get the inflation under control without breaking the economy? As Chair Jerome Powell admits himself, their tools and levers don't have surgical precision. Our tools are, they're blunt, but they are the right tools to deal with, with broad aggregate demand. In fact, we saw just how blunt they were during a series of rate hikes in the last high inflationary decade, the 70s. Before the infamous Paul Volcker, who's heralded for taming inflation through aggressive tightening and double-digit interest rates, two previous Fed chairs raised rates 7 and 10.5%, and but pivoted quickly when recession set in. And what that did was fuel more inflation, which may be why some analysts say current Fed Chair Jerome Powell is likely steering the economy toward even more inflationary pain in the coming year, when something in the system breaks and he's forced to pivot. By this time next year, I think it's very possible, if not likely, that we'll see CPI back into the double digits. And as for the markets, including risk on assets. There's a high probability in my mind that the market at best is going to be kind of flat for 10 years, sort of like this 66 to 82. Today, markets wait with bated breath to see what seven unelected central bankers decide to do with the world's reserve currency and interest rates. And in the end, they always print. They have to now. It's just math and our debt is too high. For decades now, the Federal Reserve has diluted the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar, decimated private industry, and divvied up the hard-won earnings of U.S. citizens amongst corrupt power brokers in Washington and Wall Street. Let me be clear, inflation is at its root a monetary fraud, and the Federal Reserve is the biggest counterfeiting operation in American history. Last time we checked, counterfeiting was illegal, but that seems to depend on who's doing it and why. We're no longer playing the old inflation game, where they just create money wildly because uh, it's profitable. 
They're now creating money even beyond wild. It's just absolute insane because they're trying to literally destroy what's left of the system. They want it to come crumbling down so that everybody will be on our hands and knees, especially our knees, begging for food, clothing, shelter, medical care. And we'll be so grateful to the government because they send us the checks and they give us a pass to go to the hospitals as long as we obey. That's the name of the game. To some, it sounds a bit like the agenda of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. By 2030, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Which is why Bitcoiners feel so passionate about decoupling money from the state. Former President Garfield was right when he said whoever controls the volume of currency and money in any country is absolute master of all industry and commerce. To the American people, I say that your master is not decided at the ballot box. It's not decided in public debate or open dialogue. You didn't vote for the person who controls your life. They would never let you. Your master is the machine of federal finance that in the name of quantitative easing stripped your right to property ownership away from you, turned your existence into a groveling attempt just to get by, and sucked every last drop of autonomy from the shriveled husk of what used to be a vibrant and prosperous nation. You didn't vote for the chair of the Federal Reserve. You didn't vote for 9% inflation, but you can absolutely vote for people who are willing to destroy it and give the power back to the people. We hope you enjoyed that report. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the Swan Bitcoin YouTube page so you don't miss out on any hard money content.